Hey guys, today we're gonna go on an NFT photo shoot. We're gonna make some content. I'm here with Tave, Tave Todd. Hey, what's up? So my birthday's in two weeks and I wanna like make you guys buy me a drink. Like, I think it's kind of funny. I'm only turning 20, so we're trying to figure out logistically how to do this because we're, we want to shoot it at a winery, but we're really not sure how. But you guys are gonna come with me. We're gonna also answer some questions and have a fun little Saturday. So let's go on the road. This may or may not work. This may or may not work, but we'll figure it out. And you guys can pay me to finally give me money. Buy her a drink is what she's saying. If you want, you don't Basically, have to. Basically. Basically. She wants a sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> that could be you. That could Basically what I'm trying to say is imagine like you guys had the opportunity to not only buy me a drink, choose a drink I drink on my birthday, and you get to witness me drink the drink on a FaceTime call. It's like we're on a date. Exclusively. <laughs> Am I narcissistic for thinking about this? I think it's funny. Yeah, it should be a privilege to go on a date with Jay. Well, is it? Am I narcissistic? I feel like it's funny. So like the NFT has to have a cover photo. Right. So I was thinking that we could go to a winery and take the cover photo. So it's like POV, you're on a date with me. Like, we want to make this realistic for y'all. Where are we? We're here at Target. We're gonna get some drinks and some snacks. If you buy me a drink, you can see me do this. Wait, I don't know what this is! <laughs> <laughs> nice dance. Yeah. Go. That could be you. That could be you. No, but the actual winner will get a FaceTime with me where you can see me digest the drink. That's some good vocabulary. Yeah. Digest does not mean like on the bathroom, by the way. Like, I mean, like, just like drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If anyone, like, thought any, like, don't make it weird, guys. We're deciding between Martinelli's and the sparkling rose, non alcoholic. Or we can just get straight No, Tava. I can't get demonetized. I'm just more intrigued. What does rose mean? You've never had a rose? Of course I'm not. <laughs> we'll get the rosé, I think it looks cute. We got the cheeses and we got a salami pack. We are gonna get this entertainment collection. Variety of all these sorts. Charcuterie board. <laughs> we got the stuff, we got the goods. So you're warming it up or something or what? I told you, I want it to be sanitary. <laughs> what the fuck? Is it a sanitary as it I'm gonna be drinking that in about 5.5 seconds. So we're gonna answer some questions before we can go shoot. I asked you guys on Instagram to ask me questions. So the first one is from William Carmamo. He asks, why are you so beautiful and so fucking smart? Is he really? Yeah, thank you guys, so nice. that's so sweet, aw. It's actually like one of the nicest things anyone can say. I really do appreciate that. I love y'all. I don't know, I'm really fake. I just, like, I, don't, I really don't know much. I just read a script off of these lines, like, my YouTube channel's fake. The next question is from Creed McKinnon. Is Creed your favorite? Uh, I think favorite's a strong word. I think you're definitely special. All right, next question. Vibing Kevin asks, do you like Steezy? I love Steezy. He's a homie. He's actually coming to Vegas for my birthday as well, which you guys can see. Okay, the next question is from Big Tandre for Too Real 2X. What is up with your username? How is your business going? Business is going good, I would say. I spoke this week at a cryptocurrency conference called Seed Summit, and I was moderating a panel about how to launch social tokens. And I learned just so much. Like I think that's why I'm launching my NFT right now is because I learned that the space is so new, it's worth experimenting. And I feel like, you know, I've, I've talked to people in the crypto space and they were saying like, if you want to launch a product, the time is now. Like you, it's worth experimenting. And I think a lot of people try to make things perfect with starting a business or launching a career. And this reminds me that like, you should just to fucking start and then make it better over time. So I don't really know if this is gonna succeed. Like I think Tava's asking like, do you think this is gonna do well? I'm like, I have no idea how this will go. So you guys can give me some feedback on that. And I'm trying to learn every day. Like guys, please don't take this seriously. Like if you guys do buy it, like that'd be super dope. But like, if you think it's dumb, like let me know. <laughs> Like, I, I want to know. Jeremiah asks, how do you manage your time between work, friends, and life? I don't. I think that everything becomes one. I think it's about, you know, having priorities, but finding a way to integrate it all. Like, I'm hanging out with my best friend, filming with you guys, that's working. My best friend. No, no, Claire, I mean, sorry. One of my best friends. <laughs> and I'm able to do this while living my life, and I think I enjoy it. So I think that, for me, it's about finding a way to do one thing. There's this book called The One Thing. And it says like your entire life you want to figure out your genius work because if you focus on that one thing that will be the fast result to your end goal and i think that's really interesting because i feel like everyone wants to do a lot of things and i get shiny object syndrome really quickly like ooh, like look at this but if you figure out like that one thing that you're really good at that makes you happy like for me it's telling stories and like working with creative people like you can just do it non-stop and you just have more energy a mentor told me you don't manage time you manage energy because you can do a lot of exciting things back to back but if it drains you you can't work that long right so it's not about time it's energy 
Okay, I'm sure I'm not gonna be here, but the gate's open, so I'm not gonna ask questions. <laughs> We're gonna literally bring Target cheese and crackers and wine. <laughs> so this nice ass winery. <laughs> All right, we made it to the winery. We're gonna set up our charcuterie board. I don't know how we found this location, but there's definitely a chance that we're not supposed to be here. Ready, guys? This is how you make a charcuterie board. Look at that. Doesn't it look legit? Okay, so this is not really working. Okay, you get the point. <laughs> Whoa, look, it looks like human flesh. There we go. So let's go find the location and see you guys when we're there. Look at that. Guys, we didn't showcase the behind the scenes, but we just finished the photo shoot. How was it, Taba? It was pretty good. We nailed it. I, I honestly, like, Taba had such good visions. Like he was fucking art directing. Like there was this one shot I'll put here where we're like walking through the vineyard. That was his idea. There's this truck shot I thought it was stupid. But that was his idea. I thought it, was, it turned out so good. I thought it was really good and it, it was just really cold. Like it, you guys can't tell because it looks sunny, but like Tava and I were like basically naked. Basically, yeah. We're, we're actually doing some OnlyFans stuff too. Yeah, this is, what, this is basically no. <laughs> Hey bestie, we're back home. We are uploading the NFT and let's just go do this together. So I edited the photos last night and this is how they turned out. I think they turned out really well. So we're gonna list this video loop I made on an NFT marketplace. You guys should definitely watch my NFT video for more information on what it is. For the most part, NFT is just a way for you to sell a digital asset. I'm selling a birthday, like I'm literally selling my birthday as an NFT so you guys can go on a little birthday party with me. But a bunch of people can sell art, tickets, events, you name it, you can sell it. So if you're wondering, how do I sell it? Which platform do I use? Well, there's a bunch. There's Rarible, there's OpenSea Foundation, Zora. Today we're gonna use Rarible for the sole reason of it's pretty easy. Like I checked out other platforms and Rarible just for me seem pretty easy. And the gas fees are kind of, for some reason, a bit cheaper. I don't know why. For those who don't know, gas fees is the cost of listing something. So think about this like eBay. You know how you put a product on eBay and people bid on it? Well, eBay is free, right? But Ethereum or listing things on the blockchain costs money because Ethereum is a blockchain where they have to proof the work so it costs money to list things, okay? I know, you're gonna be really confused, but stay with me. Listing is pretty easy. I've done this like once, so we're gonna do it together. You create an item, the single item, you put the, the link of whatever you wanna list. So I'm gonna put my video of my NFT. Boom, just uploading there. I'm gonna set it as a bid and I'm gonna add a name and fill this in. I'll be right back. So this is the finished product. We have Jade's 20th birthday, buy me a drink. The winner gets this item of my drink an alcoholic of course and a one-on-one -on -one FaceTime and I also will donate a portion of profits to the AAPI fund which is the Asian American Pacific and Islander community to fight the anti-Asian hate crimes. I typically look at other organizations but this is the one that I researched that I kind of want to push forward so you guys will be doing some good as well by by bidding on this NFT but if you guys are curious this NFT did cost around 70 dollars to to make like $70 is the listing cost. However, I've listed NFTs that costed up to $200 per listing. So this can get very, very expensive. All right, so this is the NFT on the market. It was fairly easy. I do recommend wearable. I'm not sure how it works yet, but this bid will close on my birthday. So if you guys haven't already, go check out the link in the description box. You guys can maybe open another tab, set up your Ethereum wallet if you'd like, and you guys can go on a birthday date with me. <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna fail completely, but hopefully you guys thought it was fun or cool and appreciate it in any way. Okay, the next question I have is about the sustainability issues about NFTs. So if you guys don't know, NFTs take a lot of energy to make, right? Like your computer powering right now takes energy. If you're watching this video, your phone's probably charging, right? So NFTs are on the more extreme and take a lot of energy because the way the money is mined is through like power. It's through like computers mining it. So there's a lot of conversations around NFTs being hurtful to the environment. So when I heard this, my mind immediately was like, what? Cause like, I am so interested in blockchain and web 3.0, but like if it's hurting the earth, like what the fuck, you know? I personally watched the Spiracy documentary last week on Netflix and like even watching whales and sharks getting murdered like makes me so sad and I want to eat less meat and fish just to help out the earth. So like I told you guys, when I first heard this, I was like, what the fuck? So I dug some more research and this is kind of what I found. There's this article by Sterling Crispin. I'll link it below so you guys can check it out. And he talks about how harmful NFTs are compared to a larger picture. So the scale of the problem matters, right? Like the Sea Spiracy documentary on Netflix talks about you can pick up as much plastic as you like, right? And doing your good, 
But if there's an organization killing whales and dolphins at scale, you know, there's a bigger issue to matter. There's more pressing issues for the media to cover in order to fix the greater issue. That's what the documentary really talks about. So I think that this graph really shows the, the scale of which Bitcoin and Ethereum supposedly affects the carbon footprint. So Bitcoin takes 0.07% and Ethereum 0.02. So you can see that the larger picture is other energy factors. The meat consumption industry takes 200 times more energy than Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So the scale of which does matter. Also, YouTube, platforms like YouTube servers take a lot of energy. We can see here YouTube and the entire Ethereum network have a similar carbon footprint. They're equally sized. So that's kind of what I think is really important to understand because the scale is super important. And I know people don't like this answer because it just, it still shows that that the world we're living in, you know, we as humans create a lot of waste and it's really, really scary and sad, but I think we can turn this around and use it for good. It just starts with acknowledging, yes, there's an issue, but moving forward from it. I also do want to say that there is Ethereum 2.0 coming out, I'm pretty sure. So this is going to be the new blockchain or that helps basically go from proof of work to proof of stake. So essentially less energy being used and hopefully can improve, you know, the carbon footprint. I will link this article below for those who want to look at it more. I know that I'm learning still every day. So if you guys have any feedback, let me know. I want to be better on this earth for sure, but I'm definitely an imperfect environmentalist. Hannah Kari says, I love your hair color. What retouch do you ask your hairstylist for on your hair? Thank you guys if you like, thank you guys if you like my hair. I basically asked for an iridescent purple pink hair color. So it's just blonde, but I tone it purple and pink. <laughs> so thank you guys. All right, last two questions. Do you actually like matcha? Yes. Yes, I do. And the last question, what is your favorite thing about your job? I honestly think my favorite thing about my job is the fact that I get to hang out with you guys. I know this is so cliche, but y'all, not only are you guys the Dharma Nation watching my videos, but you know, a lot of you guys are my team members now. I work with some cryptocurrency friends that are creating projects and I, I met you guys through YouTube. And also you guys are like my homies. Like I meet my bestest friends on YouTube. I literally could not be here without you. You're not only my viewers, but like my friends and my teammates, people I get to work with. And like, I know this is super cheesy cliche, but like, I'm just really thankful for you, Dharma Nation. Like I'm not here to make money or build followers. Like I'm just here to build friends and y'all be my fucking homies. Yeah, I love you guys. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and supporting me. I will link below the NFT for my birthday. If you guys want to participate, I'm super pumped to see where it goes. I really do think Web 3.0 is going to be the future. And this is just a little experiment I'm trying to come up with. So let me know your guys' thoughts. I seriously don't know where the NFT will be again at the this point of the video so hopefully it doesn't fully flop and you guys enjoy it <laughs> thank you guys for watching this video and shout out to the comment winner shout out to the comment winner comment on this post to be featured in the next episode if you guys want to be the next comment winner comment below and like i said if you want to buy me a drink link below buy me a drink guys no an alcoholic of course <laughs> bye